Well, hey, cross cart fans. Uh, I was just out ripping in the safari cart. A little bit muddy, snow starting to melt. Uh, the reason I did that is because I got the correct belt for the CVT. I was running a three quarter inch width belt and my setup calls for seven eighths. So everything you guys have seen is like half the capabilities of this thing. It is incredibly fast now. It's incredibly responsive. Uh, the low end speed is a million times better. The top end is a million times better. The engine gets on step right away. So coming from that, number one, I'm glad I didn't tell you guys uh, what belt I was using so I could be using the same one. Number two, um, if you're having issues or you think it should be faster, double check your setup. Do a little bit of research. Make sure you got all the right stuff. So uh, as the title suggests, uh, I was out there and I was realizing what tires I was running and somebody had brought up that I should do a tech special on uh, my tire setups and the different reasons I use the different tires. Everything I do has a ton of thought and research put into it because I don't like to waste money. I like to know that what I'm going to do has a 99% chance of working. Uh, you can't always have that, but you can do your best to try and get there. So, uh, number one, uh, I build cross carts, right? So there is a required cross cart tire for competition. There is specific size, specific brand. Uh, you can get them in different hardness, but as you can see, these are pretty small. They are 18 inches tall, which is a very, very small tire to go on a single seat buggy, in my opinion. Um, they even look small on the professional ones, but they're fast and they look cool, so you kind of overlook it. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Before I even do tires, or before I even did tires, I checked the gearing. Now, I use Gearing Commander it's an online website. You can input the stock gearing of the donor engine that you're using for your cross cart, and it will give you the gear ratios of the transmission, and it'll let you input front sprocket, rear sprocket, and tire size to spit out numbers by gear, uh, top speed, RPMs per gear, and then overall top speed. Now, what I do is I just shoot for uh, a little over 90 for an ATV engine and uh, over 100 for a six-speed motorcycle engine. Um, I look at first gear. I don't want first gear to go up to 60 miles an hour because most of the places I drive, I would only use two gears and it wouldn't be that fun. I like shifting, I like rowing the gears. So I'll shoot for 35 for first gear if I can. Um, I'll just shoot for the lowest ratio for first with a decent top end. Now, taking these things three digits is pretty rare. So I don't really focus on the top end. I focus on the fun getting there, rowing gears, upshifting, downshifting, backing it into corners. That's the fun stuff. Getting out there and just going as fast as you can is not the funnest part of this. So I set mine up for all the stuff in between. So enough about gear commander, let's get back on tires. So like I said, these are the race sanctioned tires. Now these are the Hoosiers, but uh, Maxxis also makes uh, cross cart sanctioned tires. They're a pretty soft compound and these suckers hook up. Um, the tread isn't that aggressive as far as the lugs, but the rubber compound, these are like winter tires. They're super soft and they just grab everywhere. These will actually tear up my lawn more than these big lug all-terrain tires. So if you're looking to hook up and tear up stuff and rut up, these are your choice. Uh, you can still drift on them, uh, but it takes a lot more of the old right foot to get them churning. So uh, wheels, let's talk about wheels. Um, my preference is using aluminum DWT 10 inch wheels. Uh, at least for the street stuff, the street looking ones. The all-terrain tires, I use 12 inch rims. Why do I do that? I have no idea. I think the original thought was that the all-terrain tires were gonna be a bigger diameter. 
Um, they were going to be for trail riding. Uh, I wanted a little more clearance from the tire and I wanted an easy gear swap of the front sprocket. Um, every tooth on the front is worth three on the back. So if you t step up a tire size, my rough math was that it's three to six teeth in the back, depending on how much taller you go. And it's not hard to get a front sprocket in uh, a three tooth range. That was just my simple logic on being able to swap tires and keep the engine running the same way. Uh, the 12 inch tires, because uh, these are 23 inch tires, if I wanted to go bigger, I had a bigger rim that would take bigger sizes of tires. Uh, roughly the max size of tire you can get for 10 inch rims is like 22 or 23 inch tires. The max size for 12 inch tires is considerably more. So give you, give you a look. There you go. Now I actually use these the least, um, at least the back ones. When this one is in cross cart mode, these are awesome on the front because it gives you a lot of authority on the front end. These will grab, they'll turn, they help control drifts better. And with the live rear axle, they have less tendency to push when you're at low speed and high turn angle. So I guess the next option is stock ATV tires. Now I pull a lot of stuff from the ATV world uh, because there are secondhand parts readily available. And I love that because they're a lot less expensive. Now these are the stock wheels and tires off of a Polaris Outlaw, which is absolutely my favorite donor. Now these wheels are cool because the front is a five inch rim and the offset on it is a four plus one or one plus four, however you want to do it. There's four inches on the inside and one inch on the outside. So you can run these up front and your track width is going to be set up nicely with whatever A-arms you use. Now the back wheels on an Outlaw are nine inch rims. I think they're eight inches wide and they're two plus six. Anyway, uh, they are flat on the outside and deep on the inside. I haven't found a way to get nine inch wheels to work with my setups. This is a small area to try to fit a hub and suspension in there without rubbing. It's just, it's tight. But these would be cool because they look like cross cart wheels. Uh, on ATV tires, the rear end hook up really well because they have cool lugs on them. They will tear your yard up. Uh, the fronts work terribly. They work absolutely terribly. They were not made for a wide front track width and you're basically riding on this center ribbon unless you have a different style of front tire. Uh, these have not worked out well for me at all. Now, these are my favorite tires to use on all of my carts, no matter how they're set up, um, no matter what engine's on them. These are my favorite. Now, these are street style, flat track style, TT style. They have many different names of how to find them. Um, these are kind of speed racers, and these are Sun F tires. Now, I do have matching Sun F fronts and rears. These were out of stock, so I gave these a try. Uh, can't decide which I like better for the back, the Sun Fs or the Kendas. They work about the same, they're the same idea. Now these give you plenty of traction, but they don't tear up your yard. I know it looks like in my video that I'm absolutely destroying my yard, but these just pull up the dirt from under the grass. It doesn't rip the grass out. Um, after two weeks and some rain, my yard looks like it was never driven off. I get a lot of, a lot of flack about tearing up my yard, but that's why I bought this house so I could drive my carts in my yard. So these are my favorite for those reasons. Um, they're nice and slippy for drifting. Um, you can use as little or as much throttle as you want. Uh, the front ends hook up decently. They look great on the cart. They give you a decent amount of ground clearance and they're lightweight. And I run these on uh, 10 inch tires, like I said, the Outlaw stock front DWT rim is my favorite. Uh, the back one, I just got an offset that I could find in a 4x110 bolt pattern. Now, let's talk utility tires. These are wheels and tires somebody gave me that don't fit any of my stuff, but they knew I like this stuff, so they just like, hey, here's some wheels and tires. 
Uh, they're off of a utility quad, I think maybe a Bayou or something like that. Uh, they got steel wheels and 22 inch tires. This 22 looks a lot bigger than the other 22s. That's because it's bigger and roundier than the other ones. Um, this is my preferred trail tire and it is a Carlisle all trail tire. And the size I like them in is 23 inches, but I did get a set of 25 inch all trails for the two seater. It's got a bigger presence. So I thought a bigger tire might look good on it. So you see, it's not that much bigger, but the presence of it fits the two seater a lot better than the uh, 23 inch tires. This is mounted on a 12 inch wheel. And this is mounted on a 10 inch wheel. Now we'll get into why I don't run 32 inch tires. <laughs> why I don't run 35 or 38 inch tires. Now I agree that it would look cool. It would give a ton of ground clearance and it's that aggressive hammer buggy look. I get it. I get it. But here's why I don't. All right, let's get the kitchen scale out and hope it can hold all this weight. So let's just do a comparison. Uh, this is the big all-terrain tire on a 12 inch wheel. It caused an error on this. Now the max weight I can put on this is 23 pounds. So this is over 23 pounds. So I'm guessing it's about 25, 26 pounds per corner. Now keep that in mind. Now let's go to the lightest weight one, which is the race tire on a 10 inch wheel. This weighs in at 14 pounds and 6.7 ounces or 230 fluoric ounces, 6.54 kilograms for you metric guys. Now you can see that is a 10 pound difference between tires, 10 pounds per corner. So the idea behind that is that every one pound of rotational mass is roughly 10 pounds of weight on the cross cart. Now let's break that down into reality. Uh, if we take one of these carts at an average weight of 600 pounds, okay? Uh, I have some that are 650, some that are 550. So 600 is a good round number just to work with. So 600 pounds with these tires, okay? Now we add 10 pounds per corner, which equates to 100 pounds per corner of rotational mass adding to that buggy. That's 400 pounds. So that 600 pound cart is going to feel almost like it's twice the weight as far as rotating mass goes with these tires versus these tires. The, the math on that is absolutely real and you can feel it when you drive it. So this thick Kenda is 23 pounds. Stock ATV tire, million pounds. Sun F, 23 inch front tire, weighing in at about 19 pounds. Those Sun F tires are light. 18 inch rear cross cart tire, 16.2 or 16 pounds, two ounces. This is your lightest weight setup. You're gonna get so much performance out of these and you're gonna get all the grip. It's gonna accelerate hard, it's gonna drift easily. It's just gonna feel lighter and snappier, but you're not gonna have that much ground clearance. There's only so much ground clearance you can get from suspension and the rest has to be tires. Now, as far as bolt patterns go, uh, I started out with four by 156 on the front and four by 110 on the back. That's the Polaris Outlaw stock bolt pattern configuration. I just matched all of my carts to that. I tracked down hubs that would work with that so I could interchange all of my tires. Uh, wheels and tires are expensive and I didn't want to have to buy a specific set for each cart, but I did want to be able to drive each cart in both modes, if that makes sense. I run a cross cart mode and an off-road mode and the traction and clearance and how the suspension works differentiates wildly between the two. You can see how the shocks I got on this gives it tons of ground clearance, but it makes it nice and smushy. That's your off-road setup. Uh, this has almost 15 inches of ground clearance off of 23 inch tires, but I'm not getting all that added weight from rotational mass from running 30 inch tires to get that 15 inches of clearance. All this adds up and if you pre-plan your work, you can achieve this. I mean, I'm running 
an 18 horsepower Predator, and this sucker moves. It's it's amazingly fast. It's it's more than I thought it would be. It is just as fun as the other ones. It's not like the pokey guy hanging behind. It's just as fun. So this was your quick tire tech minute. Um, any questions, let me know. Uh, the Facebook build group has actually just changed. Uh, it was an open forum. Uh, anybody could get in and, and check out the builds. And But now, uh, I had to change it. Um, now, only the plan holders are in the group, which is awesome. <laughs> now, I know it locks a lot of you guys out, and I'm sorry for that. But having a group of guys that are just building these makes that group amazing. It makes it absolutely amazing. There's nobody in there trying to sell stuff. There's nobody in there just bugging us for information for their own personal Yerf Dog build, which is fine. You are completely allowed to build your own Yerf Dog, but you shouldn't be in a VF1 forum looking for tips on your Yerf Dog. You should be in a Yerf Dog forum. And enough of that. I've had this conversation way too many times over the past two days, but the group is awesome. Everybody's sharing their knowledge, their experiences building these, and these are going to get a million times better because of it. I'm so excited about it and I put it off for too long. It should have just started out that way. So check the description, get some plans, join the group, get in on the fun, and we can dip deeper into tire technology if you want. And you'll have builders sharing their experiences and knowledge of their setups. That's the beauty of it. If I came across somebody who used a better setup than me, I'm absolutely going to use it. If they're like, hey, Try a 24 inch tire. It works out great. I'm like, okay, I believe you because you're building this. Anyway, there are always exciting things going on in this garage. Uh, the community we're building is absolutely incredible. Thank you guys for being a part of that. I'll see you next time.